Hey everyone, I'm Mark. And I'm Alex. And this is Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks. Well, welcome everyone to episode 32. As always, we are going to continue on our Final Fantasy IX series, kind of playthrough, walkthrough, whatever you want to call it. Our little disclaimer we always put out because we are nearing the end here is episode six. Way back is when we started this. So if you want to kind of just begin the whole kind of Final Fantasy IX walkthrough from the start, that is the beginning. So last episode, we left off where, you know, Kuja was fleeing Seems the desert. Like forever ago. You know, we, we are chasing him on the Blue Narciss ship, and that's that's pretty much where we left off. So here we are, man. Last continent that we have pretty much yet to explore. Yeah, exactly. And we finally get, like, the little intro where it puts the, uh, the title up on the screen and everything. Of course, uh, we mentioned a little bit before that you could have... You could have gotten here earlier, like before right. the story actually took you here. So we also talked about the chocographs that were here, I believe like cold field. Uh, so you could have gotten those earlier, or if you didn't get those earlier and you have those chocographs, there's some uh, chocobo tracks that you can you can pick those up at. Right. There's also a friendly monster, right? Yes, yeah, so we do have the friendly monster. It's the feather circle. Keep in mind there are unfriendly feather circles around. <laughs> But you'll obviously, yeah. you'll know based on the music and, and what exactly. it wants. It wants a moonstone. So if you do give it the moonstone, Oof. you will get 30 AP and a lapis lazuli or lazuli, yeah. whatever. You know, I mean, nothing nothing great. It's just, of course, that AP. Also, keep in mind, if you don't really need the AP, like so, for instance, my game, I was actually kind of, I don't really have a whole lot to master anymore. Right. Maybe leave this and don't do it because that that's the main feature. Obviously, if you do them all, that's kind of a cool thing. But the yeah. the main feature of these is that AP. That's a really good point. Sometimes it's better to leave these until you have equipment that you know have abilities that have a really high AP requirement to learn those. Because yeah, with these ones, they're really getting up there now. Where you know you've got thirty AP for this, so with ability up, that's sixty AP. Right. So sometimes it is better to leave those. Yes, yeah. Where so we, we actually have already been here. If you followed, we've already been to this place, but now the story has taken us to it, and that is Esto Gaza, right? So Esto Gaza. Here we man. go. Actually, story, it's changed. If you came here the first time, it was just kind of like, ah, yeah. it was just a little town. You could talk to people, but nothing really was going on except for all that mithril stuff they sold. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I just... I always love like the uh, the northern sort of climate, snowy areas in all the Final Fantasy games. Yeah, this place is so awesome. It has uh, one of my favorite soundtracks in the whole game. Uh, I think it's just called Esto Gaza, but really cool and just like a really nice vibe to it and everything. Yeah, but it's kind of absolutely. It's kind of like here. a peaceful theme almost. You know, like it's just uh -huh. the the songs really. It, it, well, and here's the other thing that kind of sucks with this area, and they and this just happens other places too is. The soundtrack like might take a little bit to get going, so that's how this Ast Esto Gaza one is. You know, it takes a little bit yeah. to build up, and yet the the area is small, and so sometimes yeah. you know you kind of like have to make it an effort to just stick around for a little bit, so that way you can continue yeah. to hear the song and stuff like that. And so, I I agree, I I really like it too. Super kind of just nice, peaceful area, snowy. Yeah. Except for you can't get into random encounters in the square. Yeah. <laughs> And these ones are actually starting to get pretty serious. So here you can fight uh, Garudas. I think either, you know, just one Garuda or in pairs of two. Right. And these guys kind of, they can they can hit pretty hard. They, they have Fire Raga. They can hit you up with Stop. So it's kind of that point in the game where those um, status immunity auto abilities, like, what is it, Locomotion? I right. think for stop, you know, Body Temp is probably something yeah, that you're going to want to have equipped almost all the time. And Antibody is just, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. But Antibody, you almost just want to have on constantly because Venom is starting to become a status that enemies are throwing out. Yes. So uh, that's the thing, right, is... 
you know, kind of up to this point with abilities, you kind of just do whatever you want, you know, but especially in the recent areas that we've gone through, it's just the status effects and, and just the really terrible, horrible status effects are starting to kind of yeah. pile up and definitely, exactly. yes, yeah, definitely worth it to just kind of put those ones on. So that way you just don't even have to worry about it. But yeah. once you do get inside, it's kind of interesting, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a temple, so yeah. to speak. I mean, there is the the holy dude. I forget what I think his name is. Bishop is what it is, and <laughs> you know, yeah. it it does look very sacred. And right, and it's it's all like you know, bright candles all over the place. Really cool. I I, yeah. I do enjoy it. The dude is kind of a jerk, though, man. He really he is. is. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> where we're at in the story, obviously, you guys all know. So Iko just got kidnapped. We're chasing after Kuja. We're like trying to get, you know, catch up to him and right. save Aiko. And he's just, you know, we're trying to figure out where they went. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. keep your voices down. This is a sacred place and stuff. It's like, you know, Zidane's just losing his patience. And yes. rightfully so at this point. I guess the whole thing with this place is it's sort of sacred for the reason that, and you can kind of get a little bit of backstory on this earlier if you came here before the story took you here, but it's sort of like, um, it's got a view of what they call the Shimmering Island, which is going to be a location later on that we'll go to, but right. they call it, it's basically, um, I guess, a place where like the souls pass from this life to the, to the afterlife, essentially, something like that. So right. that's kind of why this place is so sacred. We eventually get the information out of the bishop, right? Yeah, it does a little cutscene, right, where it just shows all the black mages coming through. One of them is carrying Ico, which the bishop does, you know, relinquish that info. And we also see yeah. Kuja in it. And Vivi is, you know, he's he's starting to still get pretty intense with the whole black mage thing. And so yeah. he <laughs> makes it like he is making you take him with you. And so if you weren't using Vivi like I wasn't. Well, he's he's with you now, and so, you know, you do have to use him. Not a big deal. I mean, he, he's a great character, but it's just kind of like, you know, sometimes he does make it a little too easy. Yeah, well, he'll be a really OP character if you get a certain weapon coming up here. Yeah. But on that note, too, you were talking about how the bishop was kind of a jerk. There's a really funny part in that scene, right, where Kuja walks in, and he basically just walks right up to the bishop and then makes the bishop like stand aside. <laughs> so yeah, bishop's like, through. oh, I got something on my jacket, sweeping it off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I just thought that was funny because he, he totally like Kuji goes out of his way to make a move just S to strong arm. Yeah. Anyways, um, after you get that scene and that little uh, segment there, go off to the right, over to where the shop we talked about earlier, but this time it's got a whole new set of equipment. Oh, yes. And man, this is like, this it's is seriously the point in the game where, yeah, things are incredibly expensive, but we'll do our best to try and go over some of the most important things here. Yeah, well, I guess starting off, do you, are any of these missable? I mean, we're kind of getting to the end, right? Where shops yeah. are kind of just going to be what they are. Do we know if yeah, any so of these are just going to disappear eventually? Yeah, Octagon Rod, I, I think a lot of them will, but I think the final, final place to buy them, for example, like the Zorlin shape is a new dagger for Zidane. Right. Um, the final place to buy that is going to be uh, a future future place that we're going to go to. I don't want to spoil it, but there right. is one other opportunity to get these. But once you get to uh, Disc 4, these all become missable, I'm okay. pretty sure, for the so, most part. So... So. Try try to basically try to make it a point to get them now yeah. if you can or as soon as possible. And and yeah, so on, on that point, like Alex just said, <laughs> it is a lot of items. They are starting to cost a lot. And so, you know, I don't know. You could have Kina. You can toss on Millionaire and go do some fights. You know, Yeah, that's a good idea. It, that's probably going to be the best way because even selling all those ethers isn't going to... It's not going to even come close to what you'll need for these... So right. I'll go and start us, off, start us off. There's a couple of new weapons. You did mention the Zorlin shape, and yeah. dude, what's with the ability? Honestly, what I the know. Heck? I, I totally forgot about this when I'm when we're doing the notes for this. You know, we're looking up, we're looking it up just to refresh our memories on the abilities or if we played through it. You know, but right. there's so many different things. Anyways, Zorlin shape, flee. And that's it. So, yeah. <laughs> that's the only ability. So really, Zorlin Shape, I believe, 
I think it's used in a synthesis it item must in this be. form. Yeah. So pick it up for that. But again, these are they're like six thousand gil. They're super expensive. Yes. So if you can get it, but you will have another opportunity. The main one that you do want to get here for real though, since Vivi is uh, mandatory, yeah. get the octagon rod. Even if you only get one item, get the octagon rod because not only does it have Fire Aga, Blizz Aga, and Thundaga, but something that's going to be really, really important coming up here. Yes, kind of an added added bonus to the staff itself or the rod, right. whatever. Yeah, and, and and to that note, I mean that's even if you do have all the better staffs you know or rods like this you do want those tier three magics especially in this place and so that's that's a really good one the what is it hamelin or hamelin or something it's another yeah. flute pretty good it does have kiraga so that i mean that's the strongest healing spell there so that that's really cool and some other different ones so i mean again kind of honestly i'll just kind of prioritize whatever characters you're using right now exactly and then yeah, don't you know, unless you got the money i mean go for it but Flame Saber is just another, you know, nice little sword for for Steiner. Just, you know, you'll kind of you got all the the element ones now, right? You got the Ice Thunder yep. and and Fire now. So Heavy Lance is a new spear. Yeah. And Six Dragons is the oh, ability. Man. I didn't know all this stuff, man. What this what is, is that weird. ability? Yeah, so Six Dragons is always such a strange ability. So I had to look this one up because it does some really strange things. If you use it, you'll probably be extremely confused as to what happened. <laughs> so basically, it has a, a certain percentage chance, I think somewhere between 10 to 20% of doing... It's either going to restore your party's HP, MP, or HP and MP. And here's the kicker. Or it has a chance of reducing... HP to 1, MP to 1, or HP and NP to 1. So, gosh, again, like, Gambling. Yeah, this is the problem with Freya. It's just not a reliably useful skill, unfortunately, and it's too dangerous to use. You're really rolling the dice here. You know, you, you, <laughs> yeah. got, you can either restore everyone to full or reduce everyone to 1. You know, it's like, oh, right. gosh, that'd be so scary. So, and, and the chances aren't that low it's like 15 percent chance that you you know some of your party members are going to be at one hp well yeah and it's final fantasy that so that makes it instantly at least 90 percent chance that's going to happen and so (laughs) yeah old rng yeah rng is never on your side no matter what the percentage is and so another another thing is we got scissor fanes for uh what's it what's amaranth there you go and pretty good i mean so i have the kaiser knuckles i and planning on buying this, I didn't just because I knew he was going to be the heavy hitter. But it does have uh-huh. ore on it, which, oof. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's good. Auto life and regen. I mean, that's a really good ability. Yeah, this is exactly why. I mean, I didn't use it when I was a kid playing this game. I don't think I ever used Amaranth as a party member. But right. now, it's like, I'm sorry I realize, you know, Amaranth is really actually an incredibly good party member. Because, he is. Again, like the support, I mean, that kind of an ability is really useful. And then with throw, with chakra, he's he's pretty dang good. Yeah, but he's got some good stuff. You also got the Ashura's Rod, which isn't very good. It's just got mini Confused and Silence. This is for uh, Dagger, by the way. Right. And then you add to the fact that, you know, to be honest, I'm still not using Dagger because no. of her concentration issues. So still yeah, kind of... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I might want to leave that one for a little later, yeah. especially. Definitely pick up some power vests. It's a new uh, uh, clothing armor for like Emirant and yeah, the leather sedan and all those guys. It doesn't really have any great abilities, but it'll increase your strength. Red hat, maybe get like one of those. And another really cool item if you are using Emirant, Wing Edge is finally for sale, and it's really powerful throw items. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe get a couple of those. I mean, depends on what your party is, but you do have a power vest. Might want to get another one just because, yeah, I mean, they really, really does boost strength. They're and, pretty dang good. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, so that's the items. We always got to slug through that, especially when they give us a whole lot at one time like they did right now. But we will move on right after we do our bold move. All right, man, go ahead and start us off. All right, so going back to Final Fantasy VIII on this one, 
you know, with that story, it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of things that get revealed later on that you didn't know at the time, right? Yes. So, at the very beginning of the game, when you get sent off uh, by Sid and Garden to go assassinate... Well, I mean, you later get the, the mission to assassinate Sorceress Adia. Right. And, you know, it's just so interesting how later on in the story you find out that Sid is still married to Sorceress Adia. <laughs> They're <laughs> so, separated, okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so then it's fine to assassinate her, right? That, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. It's like, man, that is bold, dude. You couldn't talk it out or anything? Nope. You just had to go ahead and, you know... Hire some people to go kill her, okay. Pull the trigger, Irvine, take her out. I, I need that, I need that life, uh, <laughs> that life insurance money. Yeah, for real. It's like insurance fraud or something. Oh, man. Yeah, that is, that is pretty it. rough. Yeah, you do learn that. Yeah. It's like, dang, dude, you just trying to have your wife assassinated. What's going on with that? Oh, man. All right, well, mine also goes to a Sid from Final <laughs> Fantasy IX, you know, it's this might be cheating a little bit, but we literally just talked about how you know we're in Desert Palace and Sid's a frog. So it was a pretty bold move <laughs> for him to step up against Zorn and Thorn as a frog. You know, hey, I mean, yeah, granted he was point. trying to save Iko. I get that, but dude, you're a frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't. Come on, they squished you instantly as they should. That was a bold yeah. move. Even after his pitiful attempts at the uh, Hedgehog Pie game thing, so, <laughs> you know, he's trying, he does his best. He got too much courage from grabbing that key from a caged animal, you know, know it's like, come on, man. Was all, he was full of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, those are our bold moves, and let's continue on with Final Fantasy IX. So once you do get all those items or, you know, whatever you can afford, unless you're just going to go back out to get a little bit more gill, pretty much there's yeah. nothing else to do here. So you do need to go ahead, I think it's north, head on up, and you will get to the next screen. Nice song mm -hmm. still playing, it's awesome. And we got Mogrika, the Moogle, so she is here. If you talk to her and go to Mognet, she herself received a letter from no, none other than Artemisian. And, yeah. you know, if you do read all these letters and stuff, you... They really start, or they're all basically kind of talking now about Mog Central and what the heck yeah. is going on. No one's getting their mail. <laughs> you know, this one's pretty funny because he's yeah. he's talking about he's used too much of it on himself. Yeah. And, hey, yeah. I know you've used some on it yourself too, you know, kind of a deal. <laughs> you still don't know what this is, right? They haven't actually named this substance. I mean, we know what it is, right. obviously, but they haven't named it. So it's just kind of a, a funny little thing that's that's going on right now. Yeah, exactly. Like ever since Alexandria at the start of Disc Three, they we saw Artemision for the first time. Yeah, and it's like the most beautiful Moogle ever, or whatever, right? <laughs> and so you know, there's some there's some like beauty products or something it's like something they've been using. On. Yeah, so it is funny that you mentioned that that we haven't uncovered Ognet Central yet and gone yes. over that, but it does uh, talk about all that stuff. Then on top of that, so after you read that, she will give you a letter to deliver to Mulan. Yep. And so that's so... that's the only one you got is Magrika de, de Mulan. And once again, we're kind of just being funneled to the right. So you go down that path and you go into Mount Gulag, which we know is like, it says it's like a deactivated volcano or whatever, or something like that. And... Yeah, it, it's something like... Um... So the, the story behind Mount Gulag is apparently there was basically a race of like moles or mole people or something like that that went extinct yeah. and it was sealed a long time ago that, you know, they don't know when. And basically what's interesting about this is we finally understand what the Gulag stone was for that uh, we went and got from Eelvert. Right. For Kuja. So it's kind of interesting because it's like this whole different area. You don't really get, like, the story doesn't give you a whole lot of backstory. I it think doesn't. you have to talk to the bishop to find out a lot of that stuff. Well, right. Actually, that's a good point because, yeah, it's from what we know and what we'll, you know, discuss going forward. The stone actually, like, we never hear about it again. It's never used. So clearly, Kuja just mm -hmm. needed that stone in order to open up the volcano or, yeah. this, or this area. But also an awesome soundtrack here, right? Yep, another bam, bam, one. Beep, boom, bam, bam, beep, boom, bam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Can't do it, but you know, it's sick. 
And so, yeah, another thing about this place that's kind of interesting, I didn't know this because me and Mark, we haven't really played a lot of the older Final Fantasies, but apparently this is kind of a throwback. The name the name of this place is kind of a throwback to uh, Gurgu Volcano from Final Fantasy 1. We, we might have mentioned before that this game has a lot of elements from previous Final Fantasies. Yeah. And it's sort of like a, you know, a little bit of a revival of the series and things after 7 and 8. But um, just some interesting points with that, you know, that they kind of brought back a lot of elements. They brought back a lot of locations with different names and things like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, well, we're in this place. Let's go ahead. Let's get the encounters out of the way. Kind of an interesting is that, you know, we know that, the, the again, the race of moles or whatever the heck, I mean... Yeah, I, I'm just very curious of what they would look like <laughs> in this game, but it doesn't matter. There are like houses in here. It's it's kind of like a giant mine shaft almost if you're thinking about it like that, or an empty yep. volcano. I guess that works too. And you will get into different battles depending if you're inside or outside the houses, which it's kind of kind of interesting. I guess it's kind of like you know if you're on the dirt or snow or woods out in the world, you know, it's kind of just different encounters. Exactly. And these are some really nasty encounters, I'm telling you. Like, inside the houses, typically you're going to be fighting uh, this, like, worm hydra thing, which is just this really freaky... How would you explain that? I I, I'm not yeah, even going to try know. to explain it. <laughs> Anyways, um, this... The enemy, though, he can use... I think it's Venom Breath or something like that. And we haven't talked about Venom because I think this is the first time, other than the Grand Dragon which is kind of an optional battle that you can have, right. that we've seen the status Venom. Venom is a really nasty one because it yeah. basically takes your whatever character is afflicted with it completely out of commission. They're basically under stop. On top of that, it periodically drains their health and MP. Yeah. So it is gnarly. Definitely, definitely have antibody equipped. But if you have Kina, you can eat it for bad breath if you didn't get that earlier. Yeah, another so. opportunity to do that. And then, uh, you know, on the outside, we got some more of the, the Vespals or whatever. You probably encountered them on the world map on the on the Lost Continent. But they're not so bad. You just got to make sure that, you know, you got to watch out for Freeze with them. And then there's this Grenade and Wraiths, which... The Wraiths are like... Uh, they're kind of a rare encounter. And there's two different types of them. There's They'll have like... Um, they're like these floating ghost guys... And they'll have a candle. And basically how this works is occasionally they'll use a move. I think it's called candle or something like that. But if it's the red one, it's going to inflict heat. And if it's the blue one, it's going to inflict frost. And I believe it's the blue one if you want frost, which is uh, the one blue magic that we haven't talked about with Kina. Yep. That's the one that you want to eat for that. I think the red one you can get mustard bomb, mustard bomb if you yeah. haven't gotten that one. So it, it Yeah, it's like the different colors and they use different magics and stuff. But regardless let's get through it so i kind of i say i kind of you know upper section lower section yeah you do go yeah. you do go down a small little bit of rope at some point so <laughs> right off the bat if you do go left into the house well if you need some money most likely you do after buying those those items you will get yeah. a nice little hefty amount about 9600 gill so that's pretty cool yeah. it's just in the corner I just don't get like the random number they come up. It's literally nine six nine three. I don't get. Couldn't that. do ten thousand. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're just used a random number. Round it up. Or something. <laughs> they're like, nope, it has to be exactly this number. It has but, to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, but if you do, if you do climb the ladder, there's a ladder on the inside of that house, and then you kind of just follow it, take another ladder kind of deal. There's a red hat. It's not in a treasure chest. It's just in the corner as well. So. You know, yeah. you probably should still have bought one, so that way you at least have two. But regardless, once you get that stuff, kind of just go back to the entrance. And this is where exactly. things, like, it's just, again, it's just really hard to describe some of these areas, you know, without seeing it yeah. and all that stuff. And essentially, yeah. we want to get down the rope in the well. There's a well, you want to go all the way down the rope. And there's kind of just stuff that you have to do around it. So before you do head down the rope, you need to work your way to the right. 
There is mm -hmm. a golden hairpin down one of the, you know, kind of side paths. So if you want to grab that, go ahead. And then at that point, go ahead and go down the rope in the well. You get down to what I'm calling the lower section. We need to go lower, but there's a lever. And so it's kind of like you don't know yeah. really what to do. It's so, like there's three tiers to this place. Yeah. And a lot of what we're saying too, when we're saying like, uh, you know, go right and go left, you're either going into these old houses or you're kind of on like the scaffolding kind of thing. So yeah. Um, but in general, yeah, there's there's just this central area where there's, like what Mark was saying, the, the well with the rope. And so, yeah, now that we're here, we're on sort of the middle layer, the second layer. Just go to the right, and I believe you go into a little house, yep. and you'll find Mulan the Moogle. And so now you can deliver that letter from Magrika, and you can also pick up another one from Mulan to Magtaka. Magtaka, yeah. <laughs> so quick, quick delivery, and you get another one here, and so... It, it, it once again they're, they're still just talking about magnet it, it's it's hilarious but yeah get another the, one nothing really else to do part. so go ahead exit the room via the right door and mm -hmm. you kind of just have to explore this so there's like kind of a a ramp and a house there too and there's even if you go kind of like all the way to the right there's some scaffolding and there's like a note talking about levers and so yeah those are going to be kind of around to kind of give you the the true clue as to how you you know maneuver this lever to get all the way yeah. down and, and it's funny because it even has like their name where it's like you know something the mole or whatever yeah <laughs> that's so. true yeah yeah it's like they're extinct and yet you know their pieces of paper are still stat scattered around you know, know, meanwhile right? there's no skeletons <laughs> or yeah whatever but re regardless yeah. Once you do kind of go up that area, I think there's like a treasure too. It's it's nothing, yep. maybe just another wean edge, I think. Head back to where Moulin is. Here's a little surprise, right? There's a little oh, a little roar and a dragon just like flies yep. onto the top of that house and it is a battle with two of them. So yep. oof. if you're not prepared, man, Dragons this can, can be very frustrating. Yeah, these are some seriously tough battles. Um, so like Mark said, these are kind of interesting in that they're not random. They're completely like, uh, you know, you do a specific thing, like you go and get that treasure, and then on right. your way back, you're always going to get this random, or not random encounter, this battle. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are seriously tough. Um, we mentioned earlier to get the octagon rod. There's a good reason for this. They like to use Twister a lot. And the nice thing about Twister is it absorbs wind. Or, or is it, is, it is wind-based, right? Yeah, yeah. And so oct Octagon is what absorbs wind. So yeah, Twister, wind-based attack. And I think it even has like another one. I, I'm, I'm forgetting what it is. It's kind of like another... Aerial slash. Yeah, yeah, it's like another wind area wind. of effect one where it hits like one character and then like, a, yeah. you know, hits the other kind of couple near them or whatever but yeah octagon rod absorbs it which is very handy yeah. because especially if you haven't been using vv you know i mine he only had like 800 health and so absorbing yeah. 700 which it's like oh my gosh he would have just been dying all the time yeah i don't know what it is like we gotta talk about this what is up with twister's damage uh formula it's very it's really random, random isn't it yeah, it'll do like, you know, maybe five, seven hundred to one person. It'll do like two thousand to another yeah. person, just wipe them out. So that would be, in, yeah, we got to actually look into that because that, that'd be looking, interesting yeah. to see if it's like just a, a set number of damage that distributes among all the characters or it, if it, it just gotta is be. random per character, you know, because, yeah, there's, yeah, there's sometimes some where it'll hit and it'll only do like maybe 200 to someone and then right. it'll just totally take out Amaranth. And I'm like, oh. yeah, it seems like the more HP you have, the more damage potential it has. So maybe it's like yeah. HP based or something. But I mean, aside from Twister, that's kind of these guys' biggest attack because like Mark said, they've got Aerial a Slash, which doesn't isn't that big of a deal because it's no. pretty consistent. It doesn't do a huge... It's not that variable. And then they've got like a... I think it's Wing Attack or attack. something like that. Yeah, that, that just does physical damage. Yeah. But um, they also have a decent amount of HP. I think they're... I think it's about 8,000, I think is what it oh, is. Oh, yeah. Okay, which, yeah, it's a lot. That's It's quite a bit. Yeah, and so... And you can eat them if you have Kina for, uh, for Twister. I would just skip this first one 
or or at yeah. the very least just focus on one because you will get in a battle here pretty soon with just one of them and so that would definitely yeah. be the easier one to to kind of get pretty them. pretty risky to go for that so, yeah i mean I, when they're just popping off twisters right and left two of them it's not very great to have to sit there and try to just you know whittle one down slowly and so yeah. if you do survive that congratulations no but kind of just yeah. head on back you're backtracking right so again we want to go back to moon and to the well and now you can just go left so you go left there's another house there's a demon's mail which now at this point it's like who cares man i got them and right and, and that's really it just head in the house get that and then pop back out and head north and another moogle it's mog taka yeah. man what is this <laughs> the first like i don't know three i don't know it's two-thirds of the game we've held on to letters for like hours and hours and hours and yeah. now our deliveries are literally like down down around the corner you know it's like just, come on man seriously you can't do this yourself yeah just like sequentially one after the other when we had that that part in the middle of the game where we were holding on to i think like fossil root to black man village yeah we had like three letters or something we were holding on to that one from fossil root forever yeah so yeah, it's nope. kind of funny the way that works. And then on top of that, too, what are they doing in here? I mean, there's nobody <laughs> here. They've been locked in this place forever, so they haven't been able to deliver their letter. But they're delivering it to, like, each other, so they could have just Pen know, pals, gone man. and talked to each other. Yeah, no, so deliver that letter from Moolin, and you don't get anything new from Mogtaka. So there's that. Mogtaka yeah. does have a Mog store, though, a Mog shop. It's just items, and it's actually... Nothing really great, and, you know, as I say that, you might, if you're at this point, you might want to head back into Esso Gaza and, and get some vaccines, by the way. Yeah, good call. You uh, you cannot buy them from Mogtaka. It does not have them. So oh, we forgot to mention that. Stock up on, on some vaccines if you do not have any. Yeah, we talked about vaccines the first time, I think, before we got to Eelvert. I noted that it's a new thing, and if you were playing for the first time, you might not take notice because you haven't seen yeah. the status yet, but that's a good fair warning. Grab some of those now. So. Yes. And we will continue down the volcano, but let's do our seed trivia first. Alex is on another bit of a roll here. He's on his rank 27 C trivia quiz. I think I think you're gonna like this one, man. I got a pretty good <laughs> mixture of questions that are, you know, I don't know. They might not be so easy, but they're pretty interesting. So we're gonna go okay. ahead and just start it right off in Final Fantasy IX. The description for judo uniform is clothes from a foreign land. <laughs> uh, true. I remember looking at that. Final Fantasy XII. After you have raised your party's average level above 50, you unlock the Pinello Sky Pirate figurine in the pirate Sky Pirate's True. Den. Um, True. Final Fantasy VII. The cost to stay at the Ghost Hotel in the Gold Saucer is 15 GP. Yeah, no one's GP. Um... Yeah, 15 sounds... 15 sounds about right. True. Okay, our next one is in Final Fantasy XIII. The... well, not even write this down. I think it's the Sanctum, right? The Sanctum Falci that branded the party is... Kujata. <laughs> False. <laughs> Final Fantasy VIII. Now, without card mod, right? So, discard card mod. Water is the strongest magic pre-Ifrit. Oh, um, true. All right, Final Fantasy X-2. You're gonna have to think about this one, man. <laughs> Waka is gonna be a father soon, you know? Gotta pull it together, yeah? <laughs> oh, man. True. <laughs> Gotta pull it together, y'all. Yeah. Gotta pull it together, yeah? All right, man, our last question, Final Fantasy X. If you are feeling rich, you can bribe Ultima Weapon for 1.4 million gil and get 99 pendulums. True. All right, let's recap this. First question was Final Fantasy IX in the Judo Uniforms description as clothes from a foreign land. 
You said true, it is true. They are clothes from a foreign yep. land. Just <laughs> simple description. Yes, it was pretty, I, I found it entertaining. All yeah, right, Final Fantasy XII was you the know. whole raising the party's average level above 50, and then you unlock the Pinello Sky Pirate little figure. Mm -hmm. You said true, and it's false. It is Ash. You get Ash oh. as the figure. Which one was Pinello? Dude, I, I got remember. no idea. There's like 30 of them. Okay, I'll have to go back. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That dent is question. packed when you get it filled. It's like, geez, man, you guys For need real. to spread out. <laughs> All right, Final Fantasy VII, the cost to stay at the Ghost Hotel is 15 GP. You said true, and it's false. It's only 5 oh, GP. Oh, what? It costs five. Man. Yeah. That's crazy. I, it's I the same to uh, save at the save point. Yep. Anyways. All right, Final Fantasy XIII, the Sanctum Falsi that branded the party is Kujata. You said false. And it's true. It is named Kujata. What? Yeah. I thought it was Anima. No, I mean, I looked it up, man. Okay. All Sanctum That's Falsi. I, I branded them when they were, you know, in that very beginning. Kujata. Yeah. Don't don't well, hold me to it. I mean, I literally looked it up, but, you know. <laughs> it's all good. We'll, we'll see. All right, so you missed three, That's man. Good. Can't miss another one. Dang. All right. Final Fantasy VIII. So regarding, re not caring about card mod, rather. Water is the strongest magic pre Ifrit. You said true. I think it's true also. I mean, I yeah. I can't think of anything else that would be stronger than that. And you that said point. without using card mod, Yeah, right? yeah. So no card yeah. mod. And so. just basically what you got right there. There's a couple draw points you can get in Balam, right? But I think water is, mm -hmm. I think water's best. And so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right, you got that right. Final Fantasy X-2, Waka is going to be a father soon, you know? Yeah. Got to pull it together, yeah? <laughs> You said true, it is true. He is going to be a father uh, soon, and he does need to pull it together. Yeah, and I got to point out, too, how funny there's a part in there where um, Riku's like, that's right, Tubby, and then he's still got, like, a six-pack. I know, right? <laughs> Final Fantasy X was our last question. If you bribe Ultima Weapon for 1.4 million gil, you'll get 99 pendulums. You said true, and it is true. Yes. What a... Man... That's a, that's a lot of gill <laughs> in yeah, a game exactly. that is not easy to get gill, but oh, for real, but you did it, man. You only missed uh, three, it's... maybe two can fall, you know, pending that false C thing. But regardless, you passed the rank 27 quiz. I'm trying, Definitely. I'm trying to branch out, man. Trying to get some yeah. interesting questions. So oh, you totally got me on the GP one. I really thought that was 15, but yeah, uh, uh, five. Uh, <laughs> all right man congrats good job and yes. let's go ahead and finish out the mount gulag essentially you know we're, we just left off before going to see trivia where we are at magtaka the moogle and if you kind of just again move forward there's only one way at this point i think it's inside a house you will get that one red dragon battle that I alluded to. And so yeah. now would be a great time if you want to try to eat it, to eat it. Again, about 8,000 health. So that kind of should give you a little bit of a an idea of what you need to bring it down yeah. to. But regardless, one it's, is much easier than the two. Yeah, and this one kind of, sometimes it make you jump a little bit. It just busts through the wall. like you have, <laughs> That's what's know, so right? interesting about these ones is you have no idea. You're just running around and then all of a sudden these these guys are like, flying down on the roofs yeah they're busting through the walls it's crazy well i mean they got used to it after eating all those moles man you know and so <laughs> mole people so. died there is uh once you defeat it there is no elixir in that room as well i think you just kind of yeah. kind of search one of the far corners and and that's that's kind of it right so like you do you do you actually know do you have to do all of those red dragon battles in order to continue on or can you just go straight um. to the lever and do it Pretty sure you can go straight to the lever and okay. just head on with the story. But I, I think the benefit for the battles, right, going to these areas is, is the notes, right, that kind of give yeah. you the idea of how to flip the lever. So all yeah. of all of that walkthrough right there just to say, if you want to go to the lever, go ahead, backtrack to the wall, flip it down three times, and you're good to go. <laughs> I know. It's really weird because, like, I remember the first couple of times I played this, I never even read the notes, and I think I just guessed flip down because... That's like the logical thing, right? You're trying to yeah. head down. So, but you have like, I think, flip up, flip down. Yes. But yeah, basically, 
like what you said, you just flip it down three times and then it drops the bucket and then you can uh, slide down the rope all the way to the bottom. Yep. Some more red dragons will bust through the wall. So again, yeah, may, you have, might want to, yeah. you know, just get a fresh pair of underpants because you probably pooped yourself as they came on through. But here you go, it's two weird. more. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird too because I don't know if you've had this, but you kind of, it, it takes a minute. You get it down does. there and there's no way out and then you're running around and then all of a sudden it's like... Phew, yeah it's like all right more red dragons and like what we talked about earlier honestly if your team gets wiped out with twister don't even bother reviving them vv can pretty much solo these battles well yeah i mean it's, the row, they like, will he's, use he's twister they yeah. and it will heal them almost instantly and blazaga i think does like it's like three to four thousand to them so i mean yep. he will and decimate them and he's got drain so yeah, he's got Osmos. Too. He's like a one man. This is the point in the game where he's just like a one man wrecking machine. Yeah, it's like darn. They forced me to take him. Shucks, man. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, it would be a problem if you didn't get Octagon Rod, but like why that's true. You? I mean, honestly, yeah. Well, so. and it's brand new and it has all those magic, so it's like right, yeah. so he gets excited. So, but regardless, once you do defeat defeat those two dragons, that that's the last of them. You don't have to fight them anymore. And instead, if you head on out, you will see Iko, and she's down there, and oh, Zorn man. and Thorn are circling her, and they're trying to do the extraction yeah. process. So I guess uh, that has to beg the question, man. Like, mm. so did they have to come here in order to do this extraction little ceremony thing? I think. I think they did because it's they have to be in like a certain area, I guess, to be able to do that, right? Like yeah. you think back when they were doing it in um Alexandria. S two in Alexandria, same thing with Dagger and they were kind of in that little like shrine area. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's true, and that like kind of the stone on the bottom looked the same kind of a deal. And exactly. So you you do yeah, need but... to kind of just do some piecing together yourself there because it really doesn't feel it fill it in too much. And so, yeah, that's a good question, though. Yeah. And, and, you know, so there's some story here. Basically, you know, to kind of, just to kind of fill it in, Zorn and Thorn fail. They're like, you know, we can't actually do this because she's not mm -hmm. 16 yet. And Kuja's like, dude, <laughs> I don't care. Kill her if you have to. And Dang, Kuja. I know. He's like, I, little, I mean, come on, man. You're going to kill children now? I guess he already has an Alexandria. He doesn't really care how much blood's on his yeah. hands at this point. Yeah. But. But we do That's find right, out yeah. Mog Mog pops out and and starts to to go into a trance is what actually is filled into yeah. us right after this. And here you go. So you get into a battle with Ico versus Thorn and Thorn, and it's just a complete automatic thing. It just it just happens. Yeah. You know, Mog tells her to summon Terra Homing, and so you'll do it. And dude, I mean, it's it's an insane summon. It's like oh, I love okay, it. it's like some. It actually looks like Griever from Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, and seriously, like. I don't, I don't even want to describe it, but basically he just okay. decimates them, kills them instantly. <laughs> Not hard it's to like do. A, it's sort of thorn. <laughs> it's almost like supernova animation from Final Fantasy VII. It like takes yeah. you to space, and then he sets up like this force field thing, just destroying everything, plummets them into it. Yeah, it, it's a crazy animation is what we're trying to say, but... <laughs> One thing, one thing that I always find kind of funny about this is let's let's suppose for a second that this wasn't an automatic battle. How would that play out with one character and two of them? Because we know what they do. Like you wouldn't be able to attack both of them. They'd, they'd kill her. Yeah, yeah. Kind of well, interesting. Well, right? maybe if you got Tiger Racket, I think she would just oh, kick yeah. their butts. But <laughs> you could also just continuously summon. I guess if you had yeah. a way to attack both of them at the same time to neutralize power. But just something I always thought about. Yeah, that is actually kind of interesting thought. Regardless, it, it is automatic and you will just kill them and you get Ribbon after that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not as, as exciting as Ribbon is in most other Final Fantasies, but yeah, hey, unfortunately still... not. Yeah. Be nice if it made you immune to everything. <laughs> oh but, gosh, uh, that'd be fantastic. But can't be that lucky. And no. this is also when Kuja comes in and he basically was like, what the heck happened? Oh, that Moogle went into a trance. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that kind of reminds me to fill in a little bit more, right? Kuja wants to extract the Idolans from Ico to to basically fight Garland, right? We know that Garland kind of just diminished his hopes. He killed Alexandria, or Alexander, rather. Kuja wants to get back and wants a, an Idolan. And, and this is kind of now, he's more focused now on trance. He's like, he's figuring out, he's like, oh, so that's what trance is. It's this and that. 
and he basically just kind of talks about how he just needs a powerful soul even if it's not mine and oh i can go there to get it v- very yeah. very obscure and you know as as very usual cryptic. and so right. that's what happens there of course zidane everyone comes down kuja's not very excited he's you know that he's doing his monologue there and they're like dude what are you doing uh-huh. man stop just talking yeah. to yourself all the time he's you know and, yeah and, yeah. and then he then- go ahead and leaves and about you know does a little something to the little court jesters on the ground yeah it's kind of creepy because he even says he's like oh well you know they have pretty much served their purpose of course they're not even twins after all and you're yeah. like what the heck are you talking about and so yeah they kind of like reanimate and do this creepy like um yeah they like reanimate and, and like then merge yeah yeah and so you end up fighting this incredibly weird looking dude it's grotesque um, man it is yeah, yeah it's basically the two of them merged into some creature and this is always just super interesting to me like so apparently this is what they really were the whole time i guess is it, they weren't really like actual two two separate things or well, sort of. I mean, but they weren't really beings. They were actually sort of created for this, and they were pretty much monsters the whole time. Yeah. Or do you think he? Do you think he reanimated them that way? I don't know. It's a good. It's something I've always wondered about. What the well, heck? What well, yeah, because they, like you melting. said, that Kuja mentions like how they're not twins after all, and it's kind of like yeah, it's like exactly. what? What does that even mean? Like, so okay, are they like black mages? Like, what? What exactly are these guys? But yeah and they sort of showed up at the same time that he did and started deceiving Baron. so it's really interesting when you think about it like he was sort of their pawns to begin with yeah well regardless here you go boss battle time uh what is it melty gemini i guess is is what they're called and (laughs) melty gemini Jamini, um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't really know but regardless right before this battle happens vivi chases after kuja and Ico stays. So essentially, Vivi's gone. Ico's in the party now to fill in that spot, which kind of yeah, sucks, actually. <laughs> it does, because you don't have a chance to equip her or anything before no, this fight. No, you don't. So really, when you think about it, if you knew everything that was going to happen, the last time you have to really equip her is back at the Desert Palace, which is kind of crazy. Which so. is kind of funny because we recommended taking all the really good stuff off her yeah. if you plan on using <laughs> it. So if you did do that, she doesn't actually have hardly anything on. Oh, and so, Good point. We uh, didn't want to spoil it. No. So, ha, huh, joke's on you. Gotcha. No, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of right off the bat here, here we go, Steals. It is unfortunately nothing too amazing. You can't get 100% vaccine, so you can at least have one if you've never bought yep. one or got another one before. And a golden hairpin. I mean, that's that's okay. The vaccine's 100%. Yep. Golden hairpin's 25 But the cool thing, which is new if you are lucky enough to get it, is Demon's Vest. Not to be, you know, confused with Demon's Mail. Completely different and mm-hmm. better item. But it's a 0.39% chance. We're, we're, we always have yeah. those super incredibly rare st- steals now on every boss. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. But this is a pretty tough battle. And this guy, we talked about the vaccines. The reason why, yes. he starts off the battle right off the bat with a move called Viral Smoke. This inflicts a virus on the party. And basically, it's not really the end of the world. But what it does is it disables uh, experience and AP gain. So unfortunately if you do finish the battle with virus on your characters they won't get anything yeah. and annoying thing about this status too is it actually lasts from battle to battle so even if you don't use a vaccine after the battle and go into the next one they'll still have virus yeah kind of kind of that's a catch-22 maybe if you really just don't care then i wouldn't even waste the turns trying to get rid of it you know and so just leave it on if you want yeah because he'll He'll use it again over time, too, so... Yeah, exactly, and it's on the whole party, and so... Kind of sucks. He does use Bio, and it's actually pretty strong. It it did one-shot yeah. Iko in my game a couple times. She only had, like, mid-700s health, so, you know, yeah, she probably is I a little you. underdeveloped. You know, yeah. she was getting one-shot by that. Weens was another ability they used that was also one-shotting Weans? her, and so... That is actually a really strong move. I mean, that that tends to go critical a lot. And yeah. on Zidane, it can do like 2,000 damage. So he's actually pretty dang strong. And then to add insult to injury, he's <laughs> also got Venom Powder, which inflicts Venom on the party, which is yes. really not very nice. No, because if you don't have antibody and a, you know, a few of them it's get hit, over. again, it's that stop thing. It's the drain thing. It sucks. You know, yeah. It's just not fun. And actually... 
I forgot to mention, so, <laughs> like Stop, if your whole pa party or um, the only surviving, the only alive members of your party are hit with Venom, it's a game over. So, that's yeah. another reason why it's a big deal. Yes. And he does have a hefty amount of health. I think it's around like 24,000 or something like that. So, regardless, if you do go ahead, take him out. Congrats, there you go, it's awesome. And, you know, well, once again, Kujos yeah. ran away. I feel like we're just playing count and mouse with them this entire video game. And so, you know, that that's <laughs> fun. Run we'll away. chase him yeah. again. And, you know, he took the airship with him at that. One little thing, though, there is a room right after that, and someone's like, hey, you know, there's someone out there. And you go in, yeah, what's and going it's on? none other than Hilda. And it's like, you know, of course, the Dane doesn't <laughs> know who she, who she is, which is interesting because he's from yeah. Wimblum, you know, and it's like you didn't know her. But anyways, you know, yeah. Dagger comes in. They recognize each other, find out that she is Hilda. She essentially just says, you know, like, I'll go back with you kind of a deal. Thanks for coming here. You know, he treated, yeah. although he was a raving lunatic and he liked to talk to himself a lot, he treated her kindly kind of a deal. And so... You know, at least he was respectful to a, to a woman. And so, not to little girls, but to women. And, you know, Hilda specifically, I guess. Yeah. yeah, which, I mean, what the heck? Like, she was just chilling in this room. And you can see, too, it's really funny because there's, like, a bed set up and everything. So she's literally just, like, living in this dark, this dark cave, like, well, volcano room yeah, or something. Like, I, I so did she come with them? Was she with him all along, you know, Kuja? Because how did... How did she get there? And, you know, if this whole place was sealed <laughs> by this stone question. that we had to get from Ulver, you know, and all that. Like, how did she get there to begin Boy. with? And it's, it's yeah, very... She, she, I don't think they thought this through when they wrote this section, you know? No. Because how did she move in? There's a bed in there and everything. Like I yeah. said, it's like... It's so very, she, very she homey. She moved in real quick, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can tell, like, anybody who plays a game, seriously, like, take notice of, like, how... It's like a room. So... Yeah. How, did she, how long has she been there? I don't know. Well, reg regardless, the, the magical Hilda just has a home here, apparently, at the bottom of a volcano. Yeah. And Kuja just happened to be there as well at the same time. And so, you know, it's it's all very convenient. So w once, after this scene plays out, you will just be popped back into into Limblom. And, and actually, funny thing is, right, right before that, Sid does come in. is like, Hilda... You know, and she's like, I don't remember marrying a frog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, sweet, yeah. Sid. Once you're back at Limblum, Sid is finally like, hey, look, man, you got, you got to turn me back into a human. It just has to happen. I'm tired of being a uh, Oglop and a frog. And, you know, she's just t basically explaining Kuja. You know, he was, you know, was yeah. basically just talking to her about his master plan, how he was just trying to, mm -hmm. as we already kind of know, just obtain as much destructive power as possible. But at least he wasn't a skirt chaser like you. Yeah, exactly. Burn. And what's really funny about this, I know, seriously. And what's so funny about this, too, is that she's like, okay, I'll change you back. But, you know, if you if you uh, do that kind of stuff again, if you're still chasing skirts and all that stuff, I'm going to turn you into much worse. And then she's like, maybe I'll turn you into a hedgehog pie. He's just like, no. You know, it's just funny <laughs> yeah. dialogue. Don't I just thought, player. dude, that was just, that was savage though, man. It's like, oh, you know, we got this, this megalomaniac who kills and destroys literally everything he touches, but at least he's not a skirt chaser. I know, right? It's like, gosh, Seriously. okay. She's, she's hating on him, man. <laughs> yeah, totally. And so she does turn him back. And so we finally get to see what Sid actually looks like as a human. He's very prominent and that mustache is even more glorious. And uh, just yeah. some last little funny things with that is he's still saying guac and ribbit, you know? Even yeah. <laughs> he's not, he's a the human. The best part he's... about this, he's got like going back and forth too. It's like something, 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 guac. And yep. then <laughs> next thing it'd be like ribbit. It's so funny. I love it. It is hysterical. And, well, that's where we're going to end it, because it's going to surprise you all, but it's about to open up again in the open world, and we, <laughs> yeah. oh gosh, have even more to get to. But, as I said, that will do it for this episode. We thank you all so much for listening and hanging out with us as we progress the story. We are getting very close to the end, and so I know yeah. many of you are starting to get excited. We are going to be going to Final Fantasy X next. Yeah. So we still have some episodes here, but... That is in the horizon, and we are both super excited about that as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the Final Fantasy X posts on Instagram, too, 
get a lot of attention. You guys seem to really enjoy it. So we're yes. looking forward to getting into that, and it's going to be fun. It it's is. Gonna be a lot of good times. Yes, and we might have a little side things in the works too involving Final Fantasy X. So maybe some more info on that later as we kind of work it out. But as I said, thank you all for hanging out. Make sure you stop off on our Instagram. Same handle, Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks. We just post all the media. You know, that's essentially all it is. It's just nonstop, always Final Fantasy media is, is what it is. And yeah. so it's a lot of fun because we like to take the screenshots and the clips, you know, things that we generally found to be very entertaining or, you know, serious or whatever it is. And so it's just kind of kind of cool doing that. And also make sure you stomp off at our website, FinalStopFromFantasyTalks.com. Just a little more info there. You can listen to the episodes there. You can check out the blog posts, listen to some of the songs and stuff that we use during the episode. So kind of just a little extra bit for you. Well, that'll do it for us. We'll see you next time. I'm Mark. And I'm Alex. And this is Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks.